All right, so I wanted to get into an interview that was conducted by CNN, hosted by Jake, Jake Tapper, and uh, he essentially interviewed Biden as well as, uh, of course, uh, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. And uh, one of the questions that was raised was, uh, how does Biden view this opportunity amidst the pandemic as well as uh, devastating economic impacts in terms of unemployment let alone no sort of stability being provided currently by the national and or federal government especially in terms of stimulus checks now biden goes into this sort of generic rant about uh, decency and kindness and a sort of genuineness needs to be brought back to America especially post Trump it's astonishing that uh, he systematically ran on this superficial agenda but he was still able to garner enough support and as well in specific voting blocks actually garner much more support especially when it came down to him and Bernie Sanders during the Democratic primaries he was able to bring out the suburban vote as well as solidify that especially that 45 and older black vote of course especially in South Carolina which of course propelled him to further victories when it came to Super Tuesday. But the most astonishing thing about it in regards to his victories is he's been very sort of uh, superficial in regards to his rhetoric in terms of policy, although he's presented numerous policies, but at the forefront of his campaign, as well as he highlights in this interview with Jake Tapper is that he needs to bring back that decency, civility, and or decorum, which are terms that are superficially coined as being presidential. Therefore, let's take a look at this clip and then we'll engage in uh, further analysis. Here's the clip. Uh, and you made it. You made it. What does it feel like, especially at this moment when this nation is in any number of crises, including the COVID crisis? What does it feel like? Are you are you daunted? Are you worried? Are you fearful? Are you exhilarated? What what's the emotion that that goes through you? I'm determined. I'm confident that what I've said from the outset, I've never changed my view. This whole campaign for over almost going on 600 days exactly what had to be done. We have to restore the soul of this country, meaning honor, decency, honesty, basic, basic, fundamental decency. The second thing, we have to rebuild the backbone of this country, the middle class, that in this time bring everybody along. And thirdly, we have to unite the country. They're all going to be difficult to do, but I've never, I've never veered from those three principles. So there we have it, this three specific sort of... Uh principles and guidelines that Biden frames as his being motivating elements in regards to propelling him through the Democratic primaries and of course on his way to now being president-elect. Now he talks about three specific factors. One, that superficial and vague analysis that he wants to bring back decency, decorum, and civility to the presidency. And the second component, he gives a sort of vague analysis and reference to the middle class. And then thirdly, he kind of combines one and three together by just saying unity. One can easily just tie that into the first point. Of course, decency decorum and civility so sort of uh, 
are often uh, vocalized in terms of sort of unity. Hence the reason why you heard Biden and as well as Obama in 2008 especially that same quote America's not about red states or blue states it's the United States of America end quote of course we've heard that many times that's that unity superficial quote coming into play but uh, I want to specifically sort of analyze that second point. Now, of course, we know Joe middle class Biden. It's a superficial term in many ways. He's often argued for policies in regards to deregulating, such as deregulating Wall Street and then privatizing the role of government, especially as it pertains to specific social programs be it Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. He's consistently argued, especially within the context of the 1990s, during his time in the Senate, to either freeze funding in regards to these specific programs, let alone specific uh, cuts. But... The distinction he's made within the context of uh, this current run for presidency is he has brought up and has emphasized the public option. Haven't really heard too much of it, especially since he's become president-elect, let alone even during uh, some of those debates that he had with Trump. You really heard a lot of that rhetoric when it came to the Democratic primaries. Now, I've been on record saying that he's not going to push through a public option. I think the most you're going to get, and this is even a maybe, is that lowering of the eligibility age of Medicare from 65 to 60. And of course, that's the consensus and or compromise that he made with Bernie Sanders. So therefore, as simplistic as that may sound, that's really all you're gonna get from Biden. I highly doubt he's going to go against the profit margins of the pharmaceutical companies and try to push through a public option, especially when President Obama ran on the public option within the context of 2008. So naturally that question arises, well, you had 2008, and then once again getting elected in 2012, where was the sense of urgency when it came to the public option? Of course, it was in many ways pushed to the margins. One can even sort of make that argument and say, well, the Senate was controlled by the Republicans especially during Obama's second term. But within the realm of 2008 to 2010, it wasn't. But the problem was that Obama wasn't willing to go against the pharmaceutical companies in regards to cutting any sort of uh, profit margins. Therefore, I don't see Biden taking that same step of all of a sudden becoming this progressive and somehow, some way looking to cut the profits of pharmaceutical companies, despite, of course, the devastating impacts of thousands of individuals not having access to basic health care, let alone the deaths and bankruptcies that are associated with individuals, that can easily come down with a routine surgical procedure that may range within the thirty to $50,000 range and specific individuals may not have access to health care, which is thousands within the context of America. Therefore, it's not something I see coming from Biden. Therefore, moreover, I would highlight that sort of middle class point that he makes as his second point is going to fall flat. And it's going to fall flat even on other issues. 
even when it comes to the raising the federal minimum wage, he's again come to a consensus with Bernie Sanders in regards to raising it to $15. But once again, I've been on record saying I think the most you'll get from the neoliberal slash corporate Democrats maybe perhaps 12 that's something along the lines of what Hillary was advocating for within the context of the 2016 Democratic primaries when she was facing off against Bernie Sanders of course Bernie Sanders even then was arguing for a $15 minimum wage maybe you get that I don't think you're gonna get much more especially in terms of maybe more funding to Social Security. I don't even sort of envision Biden taking such an initiative. Even when it comes to climate change, it's possible he can do some things. I definitely see him, of course, transitioning back into the Paris Accord Agreement, which is uh, a key initiative that the Obama administration took, so it makes no specific reason why he wouldn't. And in fact, he's actually been on record numerous times saying he would. So my critique, therefore, is found in that second point where I think Biden and the Harris administration are going to fall flat. But what you are going to get, and this is what you get, especially when it comes to the neoliberal corporate Democrats, and what you're going to get are the first and the third point. You're going to get that superficiality rooted with we're not red states, we're not blue states, instead we're the United States type of rhetoric that corresponds in emphasizing the third point which is unity and as well highlights that first point which is decency, decorum, civility and all those superficial terms when it comes to that term referred to as presidential the only problem is it's devoid of any sort of substance connected to policy which would of course be associated with his second point which is putting an emphasis and or focus on the middle class.